Hi, and welcome to the HGL technical tutorial videos. These videos will show you the programming and configuration of HDL modules, from the most basic to some more advanced. We're going to start with the HDL Bus Pro software and the initial setup. Firstly, you need to make sure you have downloaded HDL Bus Pro Setup Tool 2. You can download this from the HDL Automation website, or please ask your account manager for a link. The software has an icon on the desktop like this. Double click the icon and start the software. The first window will ask you to type a project name. We'd recommend to use this feature to save your project information. For this project, I will call it 20 St. James Street. Click Create New. This is the first window of the HDL Bus Pro setup tool. On the top, we have some options. And on the bottom, we have the current working status. In the middle is where we will have our devices and our HDL modules. The very first thing you need to check is your IP address. My IP is 192.168.10.102. The next thing is to think about your IP address and how you'll connect to the HDL system. The way that the computer connects to the system is over the Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi. In order to connect, you need to know the default IP address of the HDL IP gateway. The default IP address is 192.168.10.250. That means your computer should have the IP address 192.168.10. something except for 250. For example, 10. Uh, now I'll show you how to do that. Right click on your network settings and open Network and Sharing Center. Go to the Change Adapter Settings and select the Ethernet or the Wi-Fi, whichever you're using to connect. Go to Properties and select TCP IP version 4. Select Properties and type the following IP address, 192.168.10.250. And lastly, 10. In the subnet mask, you can leave it as default 255, 255, 255, 0. And the rest of the settings you can leave. Press OK and close. If you want to test which IP address you have, you can go start, CMD, enter, type ipconfig and press enter. As you can see, my IP address is 192.168.10.10. Now we can press the fast search. So now we are assuming you have completed your installation of the modules and that the modules are connected together via the bus cable. In this case, we see that the software finds many devices. If, when you press Fast Search, no devices show on the screen, then there's probably a communication issue between your PC and the IP gateway. For example, maybe you have an incorrect IP address. Maybe they have a network problem. So you can troubleshoot this by uh, reset the IP to the IP gateway to 192.168.10.250. To do that, you must press the button on the IP gateway for 15 seconds. This button here. When you press this button for 15 seconds, the IP address will reset. If, when you press Fast Search, you only get one device, the IP gateway, and no other devices, this suggests you might have a problem on your HDL bus. So please check the cabling. 
On the screen now, we have a number of devices. Here we have the subnet ID, the device ID, the model number, some name remarks, and the description. As you can see, these are new devices from the factory. So the device ID is five for every single device. The first step in configuring HDL is to give a unique device ID to every device. If you want to do that, you can simply right click and go to modify address. You can also double click in this column device ID. This brings up a window where we can change the device ID. I'm going to change this one to number one and press the button modify. As you can see, the device has changed to device one. We'll do the same for the next one. MAC, this is the air conditioning module. We'll call this device number two. But there are some other ways to change the address. For example, you might have many of the same device. How do you know which is which? So now I'm going to show you another method. We're going to first delete the devices so I can demonstrate this. Use the advanced search option and ad add address mode device. In this window, we can use something called auto modify. Because we have already done one and two, we're going to start with three. And we're going to press the button auto modify. The system is now waiting for us to press each device. I'll start with the first one. This one to the left does not have an address because it is a power supply. The next one is uh, the logic module. So we need to locate the small red the small green button and press and hold for three seconds. The button went red and the computer has made a beeping sound. As you can see, the logic module is now in the list and has automatically been given device three. So now we can continue the process. Next security module. Next is the DMX and the Dali. Dimmer. LED dimmer. For the keypads that are not DLP, you can press any button for 15 seconds and the same process will happen in the software. So let's have a look at the software. We've done a total of eight devices. Let's press fast search to bring the rest of the devices because there are some uh, keypads and some sensors and other modules. We want to check we have no uh, devices with the same address because every device should have a unique address between 1 and 254. Here is an infrared module, so I'm going to change this to 11. Here we have the DLP panel. I'm going to change this to 12. And the four zone dry contact module, 13. So now we have a list of devices. 
in the screen ready for programming. So far, we have found the devices mostly using the fast search option, which is the most typical way to quickly show devices on your screen. If you look on my screen, you'll see a small red cross. That just means on the last time I pressed the search, the fast search, the device was not seen. That's why we call this the fast search, because you might need to press it a few times to get all the devices on the screen. Should you want to make sure you get every single device on your screen that is online, I'd recommend to use the advanced search. This can also be used if you have some troubles contacting any device. So to select that, you select advanced search and advanced search. Now you can manually um, enter devices or you can do a search, but it just takes a little bit longer but it will ask every single device if it's there. So first I'll demonstrate the manual search. So if I type one and one, manually add, you can see it adds one device manually. Now let's add the other devices from the advanced search. The next ones are up from two up to 14. So this is the range, two to 14 with the subnet one. Press advanced search, and all of those devices have been found. And now we can close the window. Now I'll show you the way that you can back up all of your devices safely to the PC. This can be done once you have finished programming so that you can take a backup, or it could be used to back up and restore to several systems the same, for example, apartments or hotel rooms. To do this, make sure you have the devices on your screen and click Data Backup. Next, you can tick all of the devices you would like to back up. For this example, we will just tick two devices, air conditioning module and four channel relay. Click back up and select a folder. Create a file name, for example, maybe with the date. Now wait for the software to finish backing up the devices. This can take some time, so I recommend that you have an Ethernet cable instead of Wi-Fi. If you would like to restore the backup, select Data Restore. Select the file, and the list of devices that you backed up will show. Tick the devices you want to restore. If the devices you want to restore have a different device ID or subnet ID, change them here first. In this case, we have the same one. So we simply leave it and press restore. Please note, this process can take some time if you have many devices. Now I'm going to show you how to update the firmware in a HDL module. Please note, you should not always have to do this. However, you may wish to if you've been sent a new firmware by technical support or if there is a critical update. First of all, you can tell which version of the firmware is running on the module by right-clicking. For example, let's take this four-channel 16-amp relay. Right-click and read version. Right now, this has version 4.10U with the date 2017, December 13. There are two parts to the firmware version. There is the version number and the date. When the version number changes, it means there may be some different functionality within the software and options and features. Regarding the date, you may have the same firmware version with a different date. If the date is different, it means there may be some background processes 
that are changed or improved. Now I'll show you how to update the firmware. We go to the option function and we select upgrade device. From the next menu, we need to select our module. In this case, the subnet one device five. Within this window, we can click read device type. This will show us the type of chip on the board. This is not necessary information, but can be useful. Next, we need to select the firmware file. This can be received from your HDL technical support. The firmware file usually has a .bin at the end. Double click and the file will be displayed. Now, add the device to the list. If you get this window, warning you about the name, then press OK. This is just a precaution. If you're updating several devices, you can select them with a different file and keep adding to this list so that many different devices can be updated in once. When you're ready to upgrade, press upgrade. As you can see, this firmware is different. In fact, the one I'm upgrading is older, 2016. Doesn't matter. For this demonstration, we'll go for the upgrade. Press upgrade and wait. This process can take anywhere from 20 seconds to even a few minutes if you're upgrading a DLP or an Enviro panel. So now it has reached 100% and the status is upgrade success. Close the window and right click on the device, read version, and you can see this slightly different version appears. We always recommend to right click, clear the device, press file search, and add the device back in after the upgrade because it, the software will then recognize any changes for when you're programming. If you have any further questions, please contact HDL Technical Support. Thank you.